Hey, hey, a brand new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast is about to begin. It's time to be inspired by simple and actionable solutions for you and your business. If you're an established entrepreneur or just laying down the first brick of your future empire, the mantra is the same. We will flip any failure into a positive and use it to our advantage. This show is all about turning coal into diamonds. With the right plan and mindset, anything is possible. I'm Jennifer John, your host, business coach, and founder of Best Planner Ever. And I'm here to help you achieve all your ambitious goals. Success is closer than you think. Let's do this. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to today's show. I really cannot wait to jump into this conversation with my guest today, Miss Angela Ficken. Angela, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, absolutely. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. And you guys, I'm actually going to have Angela take a moment to introduce herself and tell you a little bit about her background. And then we're going to like jump right into the conversation because there are so many business owners that need what Angela is going to be talking about today. And when you find out here in a second who she is and what she's about, don't run away. Keep listening because this is going to be a super fun show. Angela, would you mind just giving us a little background and telling everybody a little bit about you. Sure. So I am a psychotherapist and online educator, but I, like most entrepreneurs, didn't just jump into being an entrepreneur. It started, I'll take you way back to Angela at 10 years old. When I was in therapy for the first time, my parents had divorced years before that, but some issues came up for me with the challenges of my parents dating and being a 10-year-old And the therapist who I saw, Dr. Thorbeck, was wonderful in this way of having a relationship with someone who you could tell all your things to, and there would be no judgment. And she would hold that for me. And I just adored her. And I thought, you know, I want to be her when I grow up. Uh, The excitement and joy to help people, to ask questions, to think about things. I was you know, curious. I like being creative. And I felt like that career just really spoke to me even at a young age. So even then I knew, okay, I want to be a psychotherapist. I want to help people. And that's where I thought I would hang up my hat, right? So I was a social worker on an inpatient unit at McLean Hospital, which is one of the country's leading psychiatric hospitals. I've worked at Harvard University as a primary therapist for undergrad and graduate students. And then I thought, all right, I'm going to now go do my private practice and hang up my shingle and call it a day. And little did I know, you know, that the life outside of just that, there's so much more and different ways that I can help people even outside of the office. And I think that's how the entrepreneurial world called to me. And so now I have an online educational system where it's like people can learn about the strategies I teach and you don't have to meet with me in session. So I want things to be accessible and easy and fun to learn that you don't have to just sit in a pot of stress and anxiety all day and and just deal with it. And we all know in the entrepreneurial world that stress and anxiety is just part of, you know, the job description. Yeah, I guess that's kind of where where I've landed and you're my people. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. That's so great. You know, it's funny. I am not a therapist, but many of my clients have often joked and said, Jennifer, I feel like I'm going to therapy when we have our business coaching sessions because so many things come up and there's so many things that we have to work on that will affect our businesses. This stuff that we're carrying from things that have happened to us in the past And there's really no shame in any of it. I personally am a huge fan of therapy and I'm so happy we're doing this episode because I know there's going to be somebody who's listening, who's, who's like on that fence right now, or they are maybe working with a therapist and they're not getting the result that they want. And they're thinking of giving up or that like, Oh, therapy doesn't work just because maybe we didn't have the therapist that we needed. And so I'm really hoping in this show that they're going to be inspired to either get the help that they need or find the right help. If you're with somebody who isn't maybe that right fit for you. I'm just, I'm just such a huge fan of healing our crap. And I don't know any other, there's probably a more polite way to say it, but you know, nobody gets out of this life unscathed. 
And we just were in our own stuff day to day to day. And having that outside perspective, having that person who you can just like tell all your secrets to. And it's so important, guys, to actually tell your secrets. You know, I hear so often of like, you know, I want her to get help, but I was lying to my therapist. Well, guys, you're not going to get the help if you're lying to your therapist. But that beautiful relationship between client and patient when you work with a therapist is a space where you can be open and honest and vulnerable and really start to get the help that you need. So Angela, let's just dive in here. The work that you do with entrepreneurs, I would love to hear, like, just tell us a little bit about what do you see as some of the most like common complaints or challenges that you hear the most from entrepreneurs? Well, I think what I often hear is the surprise. They can't handle it all and feel like they should, right? Mm -hmm. So part of the, I kind of say job description is stress and anxiety, but that's true. You're kind of running your own show. There's no manual for it where you go into job training and you get like two weeks, three months, six months of job training. And there's a big manual that comes with it. So, you know, step one through step 20 and the career you're choosing, you're really creating your own path and there's no one way to do it, which is so exciting and so stressful. And oftentimes we see other entrepreneurs like final product, right? Uh, we don't see the behind the scenes struggle. Mm -hmm. So when we're struggling, it feels like, well, no one else is, or it doesn't look like anybody else is. So I shouldn't either. I must be doing something wrong when it's, no, this is part of the gig, right? It's the, the unknown, the uncertainty, which comes with stress and anxiety of not knowing how this will go what if this fails, kind of the what if thoughts. And for people that are so used to excelling and being successful when they start something new, there is a inherently some floundering, right? And that is often where they can kind of trip up and get stuck. Things are harder than they thought that they would be, or they're met up against a, um, some funding or things not going the, according to the master plan and the self-doubt starts to kick in and the stress that they once used to be able to handle with grace, the doubt starts to overtake and then they don't quite know how to get through it. So that's kind of where I come in and help. How are you like, what's going, what's run amok, right? What self-dialogue has uh, run amok? How do we help you think more clearly and less based in stress and anxiety. Um, uh, there are strategies for it, which a lot of entrepreneurs like, right? I mean, part of psychotherapy is, hmm, tell me more about that. How does that make you feel? Where do you think that comes from? So there's the exploratory, which takes longer. But then there's also like real concrete strategies you can actually employ today that will help you start to manage how you're feeling today, research based in terms of how to think better so that you can feel better. Um, so that's a lot of what I see in the entrepreneurial world. And I also practice what I preach because I'm also in this world. So I understand it too, uh, which I think can be helpful because I, I come at it with a similar knowledge and, and skill set. Oh, nice. So great. You know, and it's interesting to me, the correlation between things that may have happened to us in our earlier childhood or even adult years sometimes. And, and often those, the trauma, the triggers that can get in there, you know, there's the obvious things. There's, you know, I went to war. Um, I was raped. I was sexually abused. Like there's those kinds of things that are kind of obvious that, yeah, of course you have trauma from that. But then there's the things that in my opinion are not so obvious where, you know, somebody somewhere said something or did something. There was a example I had used in one of my training sessions of one of my clients who he remembers very distinctly that his mother when he was probably three or four years old, she said, I can't pick you up anymore. And he remembers that day as just being like soul crushing and heartbreaking where he was just like, the day his mom said, you know, you're, and as a mother, I'm like, I remember that day with my son when I was just like, dude, you're way too heavy. I like can't pick you up anymore. <laughs> it wasn't that I didn't love you dearly. It was just like, physically, I can't pick you up anymore. But my client remembered that day as this day when like, 
you know, he would go to his mother to feel safe in the world. And when she said, you know, you can't, I can't pick you up anymore. I remember him very clearly saying, you know, that was the day it like validated all my fears. And I'm like, oh boy. And then, you know, all that stuff just kind of followed him throughout life. And he went for many, many years looking to all these things to, you know, make him feel safe after that one moment with his mother, which was really nobody's fault. It wasn't like any kind of like obvious trauma, but yet it caused trauma um, within him. And so like even in my own business, because I did have a lot of earlier sexual trauma and, and abuse from my father, and that really affected my boundaries of setting boundaries, because instead of setting a clear boundary, I actually became like very much a people pleaser, was always trying to keep him happy. That's how I learned to survive in the home was by pleasing him. And as I got older and started my businesses, like this really affected my business because I wouldn't set boundaries in the business. And I was always, you know, trying to keep everybody happy and always trying to people please and didn't want to raise my prices. And so it's amazing to me how these things can actually be correlated and connected. And if you're struggling, for those of you who are listening, maybe there's some element of your business that you're struggling in that you think it's like, oh, I'm just afraid to raise my prices or I'm afraid to say no to my clients, but it can have a lot of deeper roots for some of these behaviors that manifest in the business. So Angela, I'd love to hear your take on this. Like when you are working with business owners, do you find that there's a correlation sometimes between earlier, you know, childhood trauma, things that happened to us, and like how we're actually now functioning in our businesses. Absolutely. You know, our history, we can't ever get rid of our history, right? It's all learned experiences, whether we want it or not. And our experiences, our history influences who we are as people, who we are as partners, sisters, brothers, you know, friends, bosses, coworkers, like it, everything. So what you're carrying around with whatever you grew up with or in absolutely is influencing your now in your business, um, whether it is difficulty setting boundaries or understanding emotions, feeling emotions, right? Some people are like, I don't feel anything. Like you just put it on a shelf. It's like, right, where do you think you got that from? And doing that can be helpful, right? Uh, going through stressful situations and being able to kind of put emotions on the side. But then also it interrupts and inhibits relationships and connection with other people and developing more intimate, vulnerable, loving relationships. Um, so it absolutely does influence how we are in the world, uh, including how we run our business, how we think about a business, what type of business we're interested in. Um, how we think outside the box, how creative we are, all of it just goes back to um, the beginning. Yeah, agree. And, you know, guys, you have to be willing to go back to that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's it's never fun. I get it. But you've got to be willing to go back. And I remember I had spent four years with a trauma therapist and I only went because my husband was like, you need therapy. And I was like, oh, fine, I'll go. But I went to prove him wrong. And as it turns out, I did need therapy <laughs> because I lucked out and I got this amazing trauma therapist because I really kind of went through my whole life going, I'm fine. And look at me high functioning over here to show how fine I am. But I really, I wasn't fine. And it, it took a, a very special, wonderful person working with me. And, and it was four years of trauma therapy that I went through and I learned so much and I healed so much. And it was, it was just really, I won't say it was a fun experience, but it was a very powerful experience. And for me, it really, really taught me that when we have the stuff that we carry, we need to get in there and we need to heal it. We need to heal it at the source. And if we do heal it at the source, it doesn't bother us anymore. We, it like frees us, which is such a miracle and such a gift. But, you know, there was a little bit of shame when my husband was like, you know, you need therapy. As it turned out, once I went through my four years of therapy, then I started seeing things very differently. And then I realized he needed some therapy too. And so <laughs> I was able to return that favor and say, oh, sweetheart, guess what? I went and healed myself and now you're broken just a little bit. So you need to go fix you now because I did the work on me. But there was some shame that came along with having somebody say, you know, you need some therapy. You need to get some help. I did. I felt very kind of like embarrassed and like, you know, oh, you know, am I, am I broken? So I would love to hear like 
how do you address that? Or how do you help people get past that initial shame of I'm broken, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I need to be fixed or, you know, all that nonsense that we sort of put up that stops us from actually getting the help that we need. How do you, how do you address that? Well, I, I tend to say, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of therapy. I kind of believe in what I'm selling, right? And I also am and have been a patient, right? So it's, it's not that um, I just went to school and didn't do my own work. I believe there's always work to do. Uh, no one is born perfect and stays is perfect. And my definition of being perfect or whatever that is could be different than somebody else's, why, which is why perfectionism or not having problems is you know, different for all of us and a slippery slope. But part of growing is learning and making mistakes and learning from those mistakes and knowing what I know now, what would I do differently and going through pain. All of it is emotional growth. And to embrace it, I guess what you need to, I guess, be on some level. Yeah, we can be a bit broken, but that's where all the creative stuff and getting to know who you are and deeper relationships can really, you can get to, and it's scary, but oh, it can be so good when you get there. So it's a risk, right? And I tend to say that in the business world too. It's like, if you're an entrepreneur, you are taking a risk. You're taking a risk in your financial, you're taking a risk in your career, you're taking a leap of faith. And therapy is similar to that. You're taking a leap of faith in yourself uh, for self-discovery. And if you find the good, th- you know, the right fit therapist, you actually see a return on your investment, just like you do in your, your business. So I, I try to kind of make the parallel because they are similar. Both are risky, but I think both can be worth the risk. To see that return can be just a wonderful, life-changing experience. I agree. I agree so, so much. And it's interesting to me how um, and guys, what I want to I want to speak to really quickly is like if you are working with somebody or you have worked with somebody and you did not have a positive experience, don't rule out therapy in general just because you didn't have a positive experience. When I first met my current husband, uh, we were fighting all the time and it was not good. Even though we loved each other dearly, it was not good. And now I look back and I know that it was stuff that was coming up from this earlier stuff that had happened to me. Um, in my childhood. And so, and I'd been through two failed marriages, not one, but two, because yeah, I, I was such a winner there. And so when you meet your third one and you're just like, oh my gosh, I really can't have a failed marriage. And this, this guy in particular, I'm like, he's worth doing the work for. I just really loved him and really wanted, and we are still together today, guys, really wanted to make the relationship work, but it did take me going through the four years of therapy. But when we first got together, um, we had gone to a coach and she was a, and I'm a huge fan of coaching guys. I am a coach, so I'm not dissing coaching, but we had gone to her. Now I had used her individually as a life coach to help me kind of transition out of uh, corporate. And she was amazing to work with. And I just loved our time together. And it was just really wonderful. When I met my husband and we were fighting so much, I didn't know where else to turn. And so we had done a couple of coaching sessions with her as a couple in that space, because she did not have any, um, now I can look back and understand what happened, but because she didn't have any experience with trauma, she ended up actually traumatizing me like during our sessions and really, really shaming me and making me feel really, really bad. It was not a good thing. And I remember being very triggered. It was just a horrible experience. I did not ever go back for a session with her and I would not have gone back and might not have gotten the help that I needed had we not, we moved and then luck of the draw, we just, we had a, a therapist who was on our insurance and I went to her and she created a whole different space for me. And it was a very, very safe space. And it was interesting because in our earlier sessions, my husband would actually go to the sessions and in the sessions, he would be, you know, doing what he needed to do and say what he needed to say. But that was also triggering me even more just because I'm trying to heal this really deep, intense emotional pain 
And then I got my husband on the other side actually causing pain at the same time. And one of the things that this this therapist did for me is she kicked him out. (laughs) She kicked him out of the therapy sessions and she said, I'm Jennifer's therapist. I'm not your therapist. You need to go find a therapist. But what happened was she created a safe space And coming from a childhood with an abusive father and a very toxic mother and a mother who never protected me, who knew what was happening and chose not to protect me, she ended up really being the first female to protect me and to create a space where I could, that was safe and that, you know, she kicked the guy out and said, no, this is, you know, your, your space where we can do this healing work together. And that made all the difference of just having somebody who was on my side and a female who stood up for me, who protected me and created a safe space. And so I share this experience because I know some of you are listening and maybe you didn't have a positive experience, whether you were working with a coach or a therapist or some other professional. And I really want to encourage you to find your right person because when you're in that safe space, it should not feel shaming. And it wasn't that, it wasn't that my therapist didn't say the things that needed to be said. And she said the hard things and I needed to face those hard things, but she did it in such a way that I always felt safe the whole time, even though we were dealing with very, very difficult, deep emotional things. Um, She always did it in that way. And so Angela, I would just love to hear your take on, you know, if a therapist, like if they're doing their work, you know, how they create that safe space and how can somebody really recognize like, You know, what would they feel if they're in a safe space versus if they're not in a safe space? Because sometimes we just don't know. We just are like, I go see this person because I'm supposed to, but they make me feel like shit and I don't know why. And, uh, you know, could you just speak a little bit to that from the therapist's perspective? And, you know, what should a safe space really feel like? What are some red flags if we're, we're not actually in a safe space? And, you know, what should we look for in a therapist to make sure that it is the right person to work with? Yeah, I mean, I think you you said it really beautifully with sharing your own experience, which is lovely that you're you were able to get to a place where you could find somebody and that you to have that experience of feeling held is so powerful. And it can be a deterrent when you you get yourself you finally say, Okay, I'm going, and then you go and it's not your person and you're like, Oh, you know, I don't want to go through it again and tell my life story to somebody and it's just gonna be too much work, forget it, right? But I, what I tend to say is with contrast comes clarity. So when you know what you don't want, you can be more clear in what you do want. And like all relationships, we get contrast. I don't like this. I don't like that. I, this doesn't feel good. So when we know that, we can flip it and think, okay, now what do I want? I often hear people have said, like, I don't want a therapist who just sits and listens and doesn't say anything. I'm like, okay, well, that's not me. <laughs> I definitely talk. I ask questions. Or, you know, I want someone who uh, is going to be responsive. So when I email them, they'll email me back. Or when I text, they're going to text me back. I, you know, don't want somebody who I call and never hear from them until the next session. Or I want someone who isn't, I'm not going to feel judged with, right? Or someone who's going to say like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Or insert opinions rather than being able to sit next to you and kind of join you in what you're going through and trying to figure it out together. And it's, it can feel like a unicorn at times, but we're out there and it's about trying to get to think through who do you think you would work best with? You know, sometimes it's like thinking about your friends and who do you, who out of your friends do you feel the most connected to and why? Is it that they're a good listener? They ask good questions they take time, they follow up and wonder about how you're doing, or is it someone who talks about their own therapy, right? And kind of helps you think like, oh, they're in therapy. I thought, you know, they wouldn't be in therapy. It's like, little do you know, there are probably a lot more people in therapy than, you know, you're aware of. But I think contrast is clarity. When you know what you don't want, you can be more clear on what you do want. And if it's not the first person you meet with, to think about why that wasn't working for you. I would also encourage you to have a conversation with that the therapist if you feel comfortable doing it. Because when people have a conversation with me, if I'm doing something that they're not finding helpful, that's helpful for me, right? I can either think like, oh, I wasn't aware 
that I was triggering you in that way, or that's actually not how I meant it, or, oh, I don't remember saying that. Tell me more. Let's, because then you can do the work, right? There's a dynamic happening in this relationship that might also be happening in your other relationships out there in the world. How can you and I work on this together? Because then if we can work on it together, you can work on it out there, right? Or maybe I'm legitimately not the person for you and that's fine. I'm not offended. I want you to find your person. If you can help me understand that, what you're looking for, maybe I can help you find that person or that person with that style or that person that want, that can help you with that piece of work that maybe we realized I'm not the person to help you with. So it's, it's a worthy conversation. It can be difficult to have to say, I don't know if you're going to really help me here, but it can be good practice in having difficult conversations, but also just, again, getting that clarity of who you're really looking for because they are out there. And when you find them, the, the work that you can do is, uh, can be a, a tremendous life-changing thing. It really can be. I just think that it's so important to have somebody that can help you through these really difficult things and can give you a different perspective because we get so caught up in our day to day and, you know, our coping mechanisms and our thought patterns and just all these different things. And to have somebody who can, in a safe space, challenge that. And one of the things that I was so grateful for is that there were certain times when I would have to ask my therapist, I'm like, well, what, what does healthy behavior in this space look like? Because when you grow up with a lot of dysfunction, that's what you learn. And so you don't even know what healthy behavior is supposed to look like. And there were times when she would literally have to say to me, well, Jen, you know, in this situation, you know, this is what two healthy partners in a relationship, this is how they would handle a situation. This is how they would, you know, work through a situation. And it was great to have that, to just even know, because I did not learn those things growing up of what a healthy relationship even looks like. So that was just super, super eye-opening and important. I'm curious, like, what would you say to people who maybe right now they're in therapy for whatever reason, let's, let's give them the credit and say, okay, you're in therapy. That's awesome. But maybe they're not being completely honest with their therapist or they're flat out just not telling that therapist, you know, all the information that maybe needs to be out there or things that they might doing, might be doing that they're not sharing. So what would you say to that, to that person who maybe isn't being completely honest in their work? Well, I would just be curious about that, right? You're, you're in therapy for the goals that you're wanting to work on or issues you'd like to address and you're not being forthcoming. It's really scary to be that vulnerable with someone, especially when you either just met them, right? Or, you know, you're, you're kind of just getting started or even if you've known them for years and you might adore them or think highly of them. And you're like, Oh God, I don't want to tell them I'm doing this. They're going to be so disappointed. That right there is part of your work. So you you can even go into therapy and say, I'm not telling you everything because I'm fill in the blank, right? I'm feeling scared. I'm feeling worried. You're going to judge me. I'm feeling really angry with you. I don't want to tell you because then you're going to know, or then you're going to ask me questions just like my mom always used to do it. You know, it comes back to something is happening. Be curious about it. You don't have to then go share what it is that you might be holding back, but even just sharing I'm holding back can be helpful because if you're doing it in therapy, you're probably also doing it out there. And if you're doing it out there, that's not giving that's not doing you justice, right? It's not helping you develop your own self and other relationships in your life. So that's, I guess, where I would start. Be curious and even just throw it out there. You don't have to give it away, but they might be able to help you figure out why you're doing it in the first place. Yeah, I love that so much. You just, you know, looking at the reasons why you're not being completely honest, I think is a great first step. Because at the end of the day, If you're going to get results, I believe that you have to show up and set your intention to get results. 
and also be willing to do, you've mentioned it a few times, willing to do that hard work. And sometimes being honest, being open, being vulnerable, telling the truth, like really being willing to get in there and look at some of this stuff, I think is some of the hardest work, but it's the best work. It's the best work when you get in there and you actually, when you have the truth to deal with, like then you can work with something when you're just, you know, making excuses and justifying and distracting and avoiding and all this kind of stuff. You really can't get in there and heal what needs to be healed. I love it. Such good stuff. If you guys can't already tell, I'm a huge fan of therapy. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I'm, I was, I was in it for four years, like I said, with my trauma therapist until I just really didn't need it anymore. And it was very interesting to me. Should anything pop up in my life where I feel like I need it, I would go back again in a heartbeat. But I remember in one of the first, one of our first sessions, because the earlier childhood stuff was pretty severe. I remember her saying, you're going to, you're going to face this the rest of your life. And I remember thinking, no, I'm not, because this stuff sucks. I am not carrying this with me my whole life. I didn't say this to her at the time, but I was just like, no, I'm not. I'm going to be here and I'm going to be here hundred percent and I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. And I'm going to heal this crap and I'm not going to live with it my whole life. And, and that is what happened. It took a long time. It took several years to get through. But when you go in and you start working with a professional, guys, I think you have a lot of power. If you set your intention to get in there, to do the work, to heal, to move past these things and really and truly go at them from the source so that they, they healed. She also did say to me, Jennifer, you only have to heal at once. And those were such powerful words that I held on to so many times of just like, I know if I get all the way in here and I really heal it, I really only do have to heal it once and then it will not be coming back. And, and it was, she was right. It was absolutely right. Just often, sometimes you have to go through a lot of layers before you get down to that, like, you know, center of the onion where you finally like get there and you, you finally heal it. And then it's just like, you're free. It changes your whole life. Yeah, sometimes you have to do something over and over and over again and over and over and over again until you finally kind of understand why you're doing what you're doing. But the therapist quotes, like the nuggets that they give us, right, that kind of really hit us to our core that we hold on to, they're a thing of beauty. So I love that you have one from your therapist. I, I just, I adore those golden nuggets that they give us. Yeah, they're just so life-changing, really, really, really. Angela, you're lovely. I'm so happy that you're here today. Will you um, please tell everybody where they can find you if they want to know more about you and the services that you offer? Absolutely. So if you are on Instagram, I, you can find me at Worried to Well Balanced. That's the name of my company, my brand, or worriedtowellbalanced.com. And on there, you can learn more about me and my kind of private practice, my online products and packages there. Again, my goal is to try to make learning strategies and skills to manage stress more accessible and fun. It can be hard work, um, but when we can kind of make it accessible and, and easier to learn in smaller steps, I think those are kind of where the bigger changes happen. So worry to wellbalance.com and um, always feel free to email me through there. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And guys, we'll be putting this information on Angela in the show notes as well. I would really encourage everybody to, you know, if you if you're struggling with something, anything in life, seek out some sort of professional help, uh, whether it be therapy or a coach or just whatever professional resource that can help you heal it once, just heal it all the way once and you can set yourself free too. Angela, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jennifer. I had a lot of fun me too. All right, you guys, that's it for today's session. Um, for today's session, like it's our therapy session today. I love it. Get out there and have a happy, productive day. Bye guys. I hope you found today's episode of the happy productive podcast inspiring. 
every successful business is formed by a set of small, consistent, and attainable steps. If you want to learn more, come visit us at jenniferdawncoaching.com to take your next step and learn how to meet your business goals. On our website, you're going to find free resources along with links to the life-changing coaching programs that have transformed the lives of so many of our clients, including the Coaching Academy and our Unbreakable Retreats. Many of them started their journey by listening to this podcast. That's it. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode.